me and Oliver and a colleague actually wrote a book chapter, which is called The Future of Trust Research, um, um, which I'm just here shamelessly advertising because I'm actually not going to talk about this one, but um, it might um, be interesting to have a look at that if you're interested in this topic, obviously. I'm trying to, ah, here we go. Um, right, so my talk um, is based on a, a paper that I just finished up with uh, my longtime collaborator and mentor, Kurt Dirks, and it's in the annual review of organizational psychology and organizational behavior. And it will come out next uh, year. Um, and it's called Trust Within the Workplace, a review of two waves of research and a glimpse of the third. So I'll try to um, 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 kind of summarize uh, our review in, um, in uh, under 10 minutes and uh, just a couple of slides. <laughs> um, so here we go. So we're, we're using this, this wave metaphor, uh, which, which you sometimes see in, in, in review uh, papers. We were thinking very hard about, um, you know, what, what can we add with a review of the trust literature, given that there have been previous reviews of this field um, and uh, aligning with the, with the theme of this, uh, this seminar we kind of um, chose a chronological um, approach or a wave metaphor, which is about, you know, change over time. And so uh, our goal is with this review to kind of serve as a, um, as a lighthouse to help people navigate through the, um, the, the field of workplace trust research. So um, kind of in a nutshell, this is a visual of how kind of, of what our review looked looks like how we organize and how we see um, the way the trust field has evolved. So just kind of at a high level, um, we distinguish between three waves. Um, and as you can see from the time indicators at the bottom, the third wave is kind of just starting at the moment. Um, so in terms of the past, we can review um, wave one and, and, uh, and, and the first part of wave two. So that's the past and everything obviously beyond um, uh, 2021 is, 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 is future. Um, and so um, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through the different parts of this visual. And again, at a high level, uh, kind of touch upon um, what these waves represent and, and um, um, what it looks like in terms of uh, what research has been done. Right, so for wave one, so wave one um, really started in the mid nineties uh, when a couple of in influential, highly influential pieces came out uh, among others, Samir David Sherman, um, integrative trust model, uh, McAllister's paper and, and an additive volume by Louis Kim Bunker. Um, it was basically a, a kind of a, a very important trigger for um, the organizational trust field. I mean, obviously trust had been studied in other disciplines before, but it was really, not until the mid nineties that it really kind of was put on the, 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 the management uh, research agenda, so to speak. And um, in this initial uh, stage of the wave, which we call the swelling stage, um, the focus uh, was really obviously about establishing foundational building blocks, um, theoretical building blocks. So um, research uh, looking at what is trust, so definitions of trust, dimensions of trust, um, mapping the nomological network. So what are its antecedents? What are its consequences in the workplace? Um, some initial foundational theories about how trust operates. Um, and also um, initial extensions from trust at the individual level to moving it uh, upwards to what does trust mean at the team level? Um, so that's kind of what in a nutshell, what, what happened in this first phase. Then we kind of identified 2007 as a trigger uh, for the second part of this first wave. Uh, and that was for basically because around that time that kind of solidified that, that those influential pieces and the, 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 the kind of the dominant paradigm that was in, emerging. So the Mayor David Shorman Integrative Trust Model won this um, Article of the Decade Award. Um, and uh, a meta-analysis came out that kind of um, confirmed that uh, and, and a review. And so from there, um, 
that kind of, you know, provided justification for that trust is important and we should invest more resources into this. And so um, in the subsequent phase, people started to further synthesize what was already found and extend on uh, these theoretical building blocks. Um, so on the one hand, in 2007, people kind of continued to build on wave one. On the other hand, kind of a second reaction to that was, well, maybe we should unpack the, the, the underlying assumptions a bit more um, uh, that, that were kind of implicit or, and, and in some ways explicit in, in the first part of wave one. And so people started to question those assumptions and examine alternatives. And that kind of manifested in, in different ways. One is to go from a trustor-centric perspective to a trustee-centric perspective. So in other words, not looking at trusting, but looking at being trusted or felt trust, for instance. Um, integration across levels of analysis, uh, rather than examining each level of analysis separately, which had been done before. Um, looking at developmental processes in, in trust, so looking beyond the relatively cognitive and, and rational um, kind of trust building process that was kind of implicit um, in, in much of the wave one research and looking, for instance, at heuristics, the role of affect, um, ac ac accuracy or inaccuracy in trust assessments, um, and moving from basically static models to looking more at temporal dynamics of trust. Um, so that's kind of what what has been happening um, in wave two so far. So looking at future research, um, um, we, we, as we describe in the paper, we feel that um, there, is still, there is still some room um, to contribute to, the, to wave one, to contribute to the fundamental building blocks, um, but that, that contribution space is rapidly diminishing. Um, so it's entered what we call the breaking, uh, phase of the wave. Uh, and so there are several issues that still need to be resolved and some um, uh, further integration that can be done uh, in that area. Um, but we argue that, you know, yes, it's worthwhile to invest in, in those remaining issues, but then it's probably, we're probably better off to move on to wave one, uh, wave two and wave three. Um, wave three is, um, you know, it is, is, is uh, picking up momentum and, and, and will not go away anytime soon. Um, so that, that will, will, or that's what we expect. Uh, it will, will remain strong within the next couple of years. And so one kind of obvious, um, I guess, in a way, uh, recommendation is to, to ride that wave and to build on and extend um, upon the uh, alternative assumptions that, um, that, that have been examined so far. So in terms of you know, different perspectives uh, taken with respect to trust, you, know, you can think about third party perspectives. Um, so you know, does it, how does it impact a third party when they see a trust violation between two people, for instance, as an example, uh, looking at um, more complex network patterns of trust rather than just an overall level of trust uh, within a group. Um, looking more at multi-level models. So a lot of the, the level integration research has looked at cross-level models. Um, and um, we think there's uh, that that has been very helpful, but we now need to move to other types of level integration models and multi-level models are one of them. Uh, another one, which is sometimes referred to as compositional models is looking at emergence, team trust emergence. So how does trust emerge from the individual level how does it emerge as a team level construct? Uh, integrating trust building routes. Um, um, so the more cognitive and the more heuristic based trust building and looking at more discontinuous dynamics um, of trust rather than kind of assuming that it's a kind of a relatively cumulative um, um, linear uh, progression. I see I'm running almost out of time. Um, so, we, we, we had a, initially had a hard time um, thinking about what the, 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 the third wave would look like or what future research would look like that would be very different from wave two. Um, and then basically COVID happened and then it actually made it very easy for us to write this section. Um, so it's um, a, 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 a blessing in disguise in that sense. 
Um, oh, hold on. Excuse me. That was my timer. Um, um, so, but along with COVID, we've seen uh, you know several major disruptions and changes. Not not exactly you know in 2021, but in in you know the last couple of years, including the gig economy, AI, and indeed the political and uh, divisions um, that uh, Karen talked about uh, earlier. And so we think that this this, this will trigger um, uh, this will trigger a, a new wave, a third wave. Um, and we're already seeing some signs of this as well uh, in, in, in papers come, that have, have been coming out. So um, possible directions that this research will go into, we think, are one is uh, cross domain impacts, meaning that you know, now, now that we're all working from home, uh, there, there's increased blurring of you know, the home domain and the work domain. And so uh, it, uh, it would be very interesting to think about and examine um, how things that are happening in the work domain impact work, uh, home, uh, home situations, or vice versa. Um, with the right, rise of AI, you know, it will be interesting to move from basically human reference of trust um, to trusting you know, AI agents. Uh, is that process fundamentally different? Um, you know, will you trust an AI agent if they mimic human-like behavior? Um, I think those are really fascinating questions um, and also you know uh, and this 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 relates to gig economy but also um, uh, kind of dynamic teaming that has been going on in, in organizations um, you know how will that change the trust dynamics um, um, within a group or within the organization um, and we're, we close off with kind of recognizing that that these some some um, some progress has already been made in, in, in other disciplines like uh, information systems um, when it comes to AI. And so we uh, encourage our fields to um, uh, really uh, adopt a, a cross-disciplinary approach and kind of take advantage of the insights and expertise that has already been developed in other, other fields. And that's it for me. Thank you.